In the name of God, the most merciful, the magnificent. You are watching Avalanche, and I am Captain Nadim Siddiqui. We know that the aviation is full of mysteries, especially when looking at it from outside. Most people wonder what is what, how airplanes fly, while most of these are the frequently asked questions, some important ones remains least asked. One of such least asked question is about the difference between the aircraft and airplane. Less people ask that kind of question because most of them think it's just a synonym. Factually, it is not. So let's today find out the fact now our discussion would also make us understand what makes such huge aircraft like Airbus 380 stay in air without falling. To start with, we must know that the official aircraft classification, which is given by the International Civil Aviation Organization in Annex Number no. 7, clearly defines the difference not only between the aircraft and the airplane, but its other variants as well. I have tried to make it simple for you here. So let's see how it works out. First of all, we must know what is an aircraft. This particular word, aircraft, is comprised of two words, air and craft. Air is, of course, air. It means air. And the craft is used for vehicle. So the aircraft is a vehicle that travels through the air. Now, there could be many such vehicles or objects which travel through the air, but not all of them would be called aircraft. Why? Because the term aircraft is specific to any machine that can drive support in atmosphere from the reaction of air over its surface in order to stay in air. In this definition, three characteristics are highlighted which are extremely important to be understood and must also be satisfied to qualify as aircraft. First of all, it must be a machine, means a man-made object. In other words, natural objects like birds, flying insects, etc., they won't be called an aircraft. Secondly, this machine must be supported by some external element to keep in air. Means if left alone, it's not capable to fly, rather needs someone else to provide her the lifting force against its weight. And lastly, this lifting force must be the result of some specific reaction of air when it strikes the object which is moving through it. Means how the air behaves. It's about the behavior of the air when it's striking and flowing over the object. This behavior, which we call a reaction of air, would be different depending on the shape of the object the air is flowing over. See in this picture, when air flow reacts with the round surface, like a baseball, it passes over it smoothly but becomes turbulent behind it causing the medium amount of drag. In case of a flat surface like a flat plate, it never gets attached to it and becomes turbulent immediately behind it causing high amount of drag. However, when the airflow passes over, over an aerodynamically shaped surface like an airfoil, airplane wing or helicopter rotors, it gets attached to it and maintains smooth and streamlined flow over it, causing minimum amount of drag. Let's very briefly see how the reaction of air broadly works on an aeroplane. This is how the airplane wing looks like. If you see the cross section, it's the shape of the wing which does the magic. The lower surface of the wing is straight, if you see here, but the upper surface is bulging and 
curving on top all right this is called an aeropoid now when the wing is exposed to the airflow then the bulge on the top which you see here bulge on the top creates venturi effect due to which the air flowing over the upper surface of the wing speeds up and moves faster than the air which is flowing under the wing all right so here the bernoulli theorem it comes into play which says with increase in speed the pressure decreases you can see here the equation which says that the pressure is direct is inversely proportional to the speed all right so the pressure at the upper surface of the wing becomes less here on the upper surface as compared to the lower surface of the wing because of more speed on the upper surface and comparatively less speed at the lower surface now we know that air moves from high to low pressure so in an effort to move towards the low pressure area and where is the low pressure area which it is above the wing right so in order to move towards the low pressure area the air molecules they start to exert pressure or pushing effect onto the upper side all right and they push the wing to the upper side this is what is called the reaction of air which i was talking about and which is mentioned in the definition and the resultant pushing force is known as the lifting force this it is this lifting force which keep the air uh, which keep the aircraft to stay in air now taking it further ahead an aircraft can be lighter than air and it can be heavier than air what does that mean let's try and quickly understand first what lighter than air means we know that when an object has to occupy an space it has to forcefully displace the existing occupants of that space for example in this example you see there's a there's a round object it is falling in the liquid so it has to forcefully displace the liquid how much is going to be the displacement the amount of displacement would be corresponding to the weight and the density of the object itself and the existing occupant this means whatever is the occupant in in this picture it's liquid but it it, it can be air or anything else let's consider the space that the object was to occupy is filled with air because we are talking about the aircraft so now if the object's weight is less than the air which is already present in the space which it wants to occupy it would be able to displace less air than its own weight so the air being more in quantity around the object would exert greater force in upward direction than the downward downward force by the object like you see here all right okay so what is going to be the result the result is going to be the object would rise through the air creating the buoyancy effect such objects are called lighter than air object just like smoke gases or balloons which are filled with the gases in case such ob such object was let's say an aircraft it would fall in the lighter than air category and it would be the buoyancy effect of the air which would make it stay in air means to fly opposite would be the case if the object weighs more than the air in the space it wants to occupy it would displace more air than its own weight exerting more downward downward force than the upward force by the air as a result the object would continue to sink through the air 
such objects are called heavier than air objects an aircraft with such properties would be called heavier than air aircraft and to stay in air means to fly it would entirely depend on the consistent production of lifting force now both the lighter than air and the heavier than air aircraft can either be non powered means without engines or powered means with engines in lighter than air non powered category comes the balloons normally filled with hot air to make it rise and stay in air in powered category comes airships which has the engine also to provide the forward thrust now coming to the heavier than air and non powered category it includes glider and kites having no engines glider and kite make use of the air buoyancy effect to stay in air by flying at places where the air is rising like in the valleys near the mountain slopes or in the weather conditions of rising air currents next in the heavier than air powered category comes the long awaited what we are waiting for airplane along with the ornithopter and rotorcraft airplane includes any fixed wing aircraft with engines which you see in 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 commercial roles engine provides the thrust for the forward movement air flows over the wing creating pressure difference which in turn provides lift to keep the aircraft afloat in the air ornithopter is something interesting it's comprised of two greek words ornithos means birds and patron means wings and joining them together makes ornithopter means a machine that flies by flapping wings like birds now the rotor craft which is the last one means rotating wing aircraft includes helicopter and gyroplane helicopter we know have rotating blade on top engines make the rotor blades rotate they chop the air and the lift is produced in the same manner as the airplane that's the reason why helicopters are also called as choppers in addition changing the angle of the rotor blade also provides the forward thrust so the helicopter rotor blades they provide lift as well as the thrust but in gyroplane there is a rotor on top which also provide the lift but for the forward thrust the gyroplane has a propeller at the back you see here right this is the propeller which provide the forward thrust for the gyroplane so that's how finally the simplified aircraft classification it looks like hopefully now we can understand that aircraft is a general terminology that includes any flying machine which can stay in air due to the lift generated by the reaction of air over its surface whereas the airplane is heavier than air powered aircraft restricted to the glamour of fixed wing only the bottom line is that every airplane is an aircraft but every aircraft is not an airplane hope we understand the difference between the aircraft and the airplane now so that's it for today till we take up another topic in the next vlog just one last thing everyone needs external motivation to do better with time and so do i if you think my efforts are worth it please do subscribe to be the part of avalanche family also your feedback is our lifeline for progressive improvement 
So do take out a few minutes to comment as well. And finally, let's together spread the aviation knowledge by sharing it with others. Thank you very much. Stay blessed and goodbye for now.